So you might have a small amount of radiation in the soil, in water, things like that. Okay? But all of that is natural radiation. Man-made radiation is a little bit different. That would, examples would be um, the x-ray machine where we produce the radiation, or a CT scanner, or even something like uh, an atomic bomb. You know, when they drop an atomic bomb somewhere, it releases large amounts of radiation that kill people, right? Just like we saw uh, on that video of Chernobyl, that nuclear power plant, okay? So this is a more dangerous form of radiation that's basically produced with technology. So you want to know the difference between uh, natural radiation and man-made radiation. Alright, on page four, it talks about how x-rays interact with matter. In other words, when an x-ray hits your body and it goes through the cells and the atoms in your body, there's different things that can happen. All right? What x-rays do, here's the x-ray beam coming towards the atom in your body, or this could even be a cell in your body. Some of that x-ray beam is actually going to hit your body, but bounce off. Okay, it's going to hit here and then go back in different directions. Okay, that's called scatter. But some of it is going to go into the cell or into the atom and it's going to stay in there. That's absorbed. So some of the radiation scatters away, but some gets absorbed like a sponge absorbs water. Okay? They call this the Compton effect, so you want to know that. This is what's happening when we take an x-ray of somebody. So that x-ray beam that's coming out of the machine and coming down here and hitting the patient, it has a little bit of weak rays, then it has some very strong rays. So the weak rays are the ones that are going to hit your body and just bounce off, kind of like those uh, the, the rays that come out of your TV or out of a microwave, they just hit you and bounce off. But the stronger part actually enters the body and gets absorbed. So when you get an x-ray done, you absorb a small amount of radiation. Right? When you hear about people that have cancer and they have a tumor and they have to get radiation treatment for that, every day they go in and they give them a small amount of radiation. Okay, it looks more like a laser beam. And they have to measure every single day how much radiation that person is getting because over your lifetime, there's only a certain amount that you can absorb that's considered a safe amount. All right. So for example, if a woman has breast cancer, and she has a breast removed and they're doing radiation in that area. And let's say she does two months worth of radiation and it gets rid of the tumor. Well, every day they've added up how much she got. And if she meets her lifetime limit, even if she gets another tumor four or five years down the road in the same area, they may not be able to use radiation anymore because there's only a certain amount you can absorb in certain parts of the body. So it's important to know that. So the Compton effect is what happens with the radiation in your body. And they, they describe that a little bit on the bottom of page four of the book. All right, there's another picture on the bottom of page six that shows what the x-ray beam does as it comes through and hits the body. Not in the Spanish dictionary. All right. So we have a picture similar to what's on the bottom of page six of the book. Uh, what they're trying to show you is there's actually different parts of the x-ray beam. Okay, here's the x-ray tube. Remember in the x-ray room, you can take the x-ray tube and turn it so that it faces the wall because some of the x-rays like the chest x-ray, 
you're going to have the patient standing against the wall and there's a piece of film behind them. So it can either face a wall or it can be turned where it faces down and hits the table. So here it is, and the x-ray beam coming across to hit this guy, this is a patient, it's called the primary beam. Just think about a laser being shot across the room. All right, so this is the primary beam. Now, just like the other picture, remember, some of this is going to bounce off of the patient. What is that called? Scatter. Okay. The reason why you're worried about scatter is because if you're in the x-ray room, if you're actually standing next to the patient when we're taking the x-ray, this is not going to hit you, but this scatter will come off and hit you. Okay. Also, if you have um, a cassette in the room with another piece of x-ray film in there, this scatter could hit that cassette and mess up your film. So you can't use that to take another x-ray. So when you go in the x-ray room, you only take one piece of film at a time in the x-ray room. You take your first picture, you take it to the dark room, and you come back in with another piece of film for your second picture. Don't they usually have more film behind them in that room? As long as it's behind a lead shield, it's okay. But if not, you don't want to take it in the room. All right, now, some of the x-ray is going to get absorbed by his big stomach or his chest, okay? But remember, it'll also pass through his body. This right here is the film that's mounted on the wall. So the x-ray beam has to hit the film or we're not get, going to get a picture on the x-ray film. So this little part that passes through the body and hits the film is called the remnant radiation. And that's labeled in the book on the bottom of page six. They also call it the useful x-ray beam. Okay, So the remnant radiation is the useful beam. That's the part that actually puts the picture of the body part on the film. Okay, so that's another good uh, test question. You know, what is the useful x-ray beam? It's the remnant radiation. All right, there's another term in that paragraph called attenuated. All right, this, is, this kind of is another word for useless, okay? This is every other part of the x-ray that's not putting a picture on the film. So the scatter is attenuated. The uh, part that gets absorbed, that's attenuated. And also, there's some radiation that's really weak. So it may come out in a different direction. It's called leakage. Okay, none of that is actually helping to put the picture of the chest on the film so it's attenuated. It's really not doing anything for the patient. Or, or for the x-rays, I should say. If you look on page seven of the book, it describes different units that are used to measure radiation. Right. Just like you can measure distance in feet, inches, centimeters, kilometers. All right, there's different ways that you measure the amount of radiation. Okay, so you have these letters up here. R, D, H, and Q. R is the unit for Rankin. This is measuring the amount of radiation in the air. Uh, for example, if, if we had a nuclear power plant that had an explosion and we wanted to know how much radiation was circulating in the air, they have a special machine that measures that and it's measured in Rankin R. All right.